Hey everybody, welcome to the press conference. A, cra a crazy night. I don't think anybody in the building, uh, we didn't talk about it very much from the announcer stand position, uh, but, but we knew, television knew, that there was a really good chance he was going to lock up the world title this year. So it's my honor tonight, it's my honor to introduce to you your new 2015 PBR world champion, J.B. Moon. Yeah. So now I'll let you guys fire away at it. Jamie, Polly Williams with the Rev Stop Cassette. How uh, fast is your heart beating right now? Oh, you know, it, I know, it, adrenaline pumping so much, you know, there, there's no words that can explain it when, you know, you step off and I heard Brandon right before I nodded my head and I wish he wouldn't have said it when he introduced me as the next 2015 World Champion. I was like, man, don't say that. But, you know, Stepping off and them saying I was the world champion, I mean, the adrenaline's pumping so much, I mean, there's there's no words that can explain it. matter whether you know I'm I want it or not I I say it all the time and if you're gonna say something you know it don't mean a whole lot in interviews so you got to prove it to yourself and every time and bull riding's a, a sport that you get the option to prove it every time you nod your head and like Brandon he, I heard him say it that I'd already won it before I nodded my head but I kept it in my head that I had to ride that bull to win it Hello, JB. Congratulations. In Brazil, you have a lot of have fans, rodeo fans. Um, what's your plans that win this season? You know, ride each bull. You know, I don't look at things long term in bull riding. I kind of take it day by day, and it seems to work for me. And, you know, I don't look at tomorrow, I don't look at the next day, or I don't look at the next week. You know, I look at what I got to do that day, that time, right then, and go at it 100%. And I feel like if I keep it simple like that, everything works out a lot better. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. And tomorrow's the first time this entire season will be over, right? We got all that pressure. How's that going to go? Oh, I, you know, this event's not over with. Uh, I'm not going to really say I'm the world champion until after the tomorrow. There's still two bulls to get on tomorrow, so that's what I'm going for. You know, if you this is world finals, try to win it again too. JB, Eugenio from Brazil. É, é surpreendente. Gostaria de saber quando você começou, que você ainda era um jovem cowboy. Quem que era o seu seu ídolo? E se você imaginaria que ia chegar tão longe e ter tantos fãs como hoje? Eu gostaria de saber como você começou a começar e começar e começar e começar e começar e When I grew up, Lane Frost, that's every little boy's, you know, idol, watching eight seconds. But uh, I grew up in North Carolina, right beside world champion boy rider Jerome Davis. And I was at his house all the time. And, you know, Jerome couldn't show us how to, what we needed to do on bulls, but he could, he could tell us. You know, we'd take videos, and he would go to our rides, tell us what we were doing wrong. And, and that's what's cool about here. He's got bulls here now. And as soon as I walked out of the arena, he was the first one sitting there, shook my hand. So, you know, it's cool to see. He helped me out a lot in my career, and for him to be right there, congratulate me. I mean, it, it's awesome. This is Sherry Smith with Texas Ranch Rodeo Weekly. JB, with your world champion win tonight, do you have any plans for you and your daughter and for you and your winnings? <laughs> no, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, well, let's go on vacation sometime after this is done with. Probably won't see me for a couple months. Questions? 
I asked a question that had already been asked. Um, I, I, you picked Bruiser again this time. Can you talk about what it is about that bull um, that you like and you wanted to try again? I thought he was the best bull out. I thought I could be the most points on him. So I rode him last year, it was 93 and something on him, and I knew you know, if I did my part, we could win around. And so that's what I wanted to do. All right, anybody questions? Uh, JB, anything you want to say, address, I mean, for the, the course of the year? I mean, it was it was a crazy year, I'll say, and, and, and a lot of people at moments had counted you out. I mean, it went to, I, I remember, running into you in Fresno and seeing you on crutches and I was just, I, I was in shock and, and I think you, and you and I even did an interview uh, where uh, you talked about and contemplated retirement. Oh yeah, you know, I, I, that when you get beat up and you get banged up over and over and over, it finally, it'll take a toll on you, not only physically but mentally and, you know, I felt like I was riding okay and then to tear my knee up, you know, I was, it's like everything, the, the door just shuts on you. I contemplated a little bit, you know, it was have the surgery be out six months and eventually I said no. I, and this first time in my whole life I actually worked at riding bulls, you know, getting back into shape, doing it and I'm getting to the age now where when I get hurt I don't bounce right back with nothing and I made myself go to physical therapy twice a week for a month straight and you know, I I had to work at it and I think it made me crave it a lot more when I come back and you know I was behind on the, you know, I was a jump behind everybody else. I'd missed four or five events, and so I knew if I was going to be in this running, I better get the ball rolling. Uh, can you describe a little bit, just, and then this will be for the stories that will be written, and, and I know Phyllis goes recording this as well, and, and I, I say a lot of times around the microphone, and I truly believe this, that, that this is the toughest title to win in sports, and, and I mean Super Bowls, Stanley Cups, World Series championships. Those are all team sports, obviously, but from an individual, when you just break it down, the danger level and what you guys have to go through, I think this is probably one of the most coveted and difficult titles in all of the sports world. What is a season like for a guy? What mentally, what's it like on the home? Oh, that's the worst part of it. You know, getting beat up, bruised up, breaking things, that they'll all heal, but the mental aspect of it is what I always say is 98% mental. No matter whether you get thrown off or whether you're 90 points, you got to have you know the same attitude, and and that's what I see. That's what impresses me a lot about Kaiki. He's young, he's a rookie, but you ne you watch him. His he never changes. He stays the same, and that's why he's going to win and win a lot. But that, that's the hard part about it is the mental aspect of it is trying to keep your head clear, trying not to think too much, trying not to overthink anything. And I have a bad problem doing that. You know I sit there and start thinking about what I need to do instead of just doing it. And, it. and as long as I keep my head clear and not think about it, like tonight when I crawled in that buck and shoot, acted like I'd never seen the bull, acted like I'd never been on him, and you ride him jump for jump and just go off reaction. But for a whole season to go, I mean, it's, it's up and down and it gets rough sometimes. And, you know, sometimes injuries are the best things that happen to you. You need to go home. You need to, you know, work at it to get back to where you want to be because you go all year long, you don't get hurt or nothing. I mean, it, it gets tiring traveling everywhere and doing good, but sometimes you need to be knocked down and have to crave it again. Well, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you this for the level of, you know, you said it a, a couple of times tonight that you were wishing that I wouldn't have said on the microphone right as you're getting ready to get, get, get on your bowl tonight that I made the announcement that you were the world champ. I gambled on you a little bit because I had multiple people on the announcer stand that were saying, don't say it until after he rides, don't say it until after he rides. But I, from the level of athlete that you are and the talent level that you have, I knew that no matter what I said and the energy in the room, that once I did it, you were still going to be, and the only thing I thought, I thought you were gonna be 94, <laughs> you were 92. Um, but I knew that, that that was, I just felt like that was going to be the moment no matter what. And uh, it was an incredible year. It was really fun to watch from the announcer stand, from the press stand, uh, from everyone. And before we wrap it up, does anybody have any final questions for our newly crowned world champ?
who are really bad to the bone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but I try to be, I guess. <laughs> Sharon Smith of Texas Ranch and Rodeo Weekly. Uh, I'm wondering if you have any advice for any young ones that are wanting to become bull riders or get into the PBR. You know, if you, if you young guys, you know, I, I tell them all the time, if you're going to do it, you better put your whole heart into it. This is a sport that, you know, you can't be halfway in it. you got to be 100% committed to it. Nothing else matters when you crawl in that buck and shoot. Not anything in the world matters. And, you know, it's so dangerous. You better love it, every bit of it. And, you know, just don't ever quit. Don't ever turn loose. That's why you see every world champion, past world champion, that's what they've got. They've got heart, every one of them. You know, they don't they don't give up when things get tough, and that's what I, I try to tell every kid. Perfect. All right, everyone, with that, I will uh, let him exit once again. Congratulations to the 2015 PBR world champion, J.B. Moon.